so either McKenna from the channel Life With Mac has more attitude than any other 13 year old girl or it's her mom who's actually running her Twitter account. But either way, we need to talk about this right now. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different topics that are going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And something that I'm very, very passionate about is mental health, all right? So I am currently writing my follow-up book to rewire your anger and it's called Rewire Your Anxiety. So if you struggle with anxiety, I have been going to town on that book today. So make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right, I just posted this over on Instagram and I put something on my community tab. I'm in the process of writing the book and I'm trying to get feedback from all of you on some topics and everything like that. And if I use what you recommended, then you get a free copy of the book. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram at The Rewired Soul. All right, so to get this thing started, why or oh why do I even know who Life With Mac is? So those of you who haven't been following along, here's how I came across Life With Mac. So I made a video about this about eh, maybe a week ago and Life With Mac, she's a 13 year old girl and she has an ASMR channel, all right? Now, a lot of that video wasn't describing what ASMR is and ASMR can be very, 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 very beneficial to people when it comes to sleep, calming their anxiety and things like that, all right? But anyways, the debate was around YouTube kind of censoring her because she is a 13 year old girl. Some people are sexualizing that content, you know, and things like that. So it's a tricky situation. Now, I have been reading all of your comments and I, I have been getting a lot of input from people who are more familiar with ASMR than I am. So I have been listening and I don't know, it's, it's a tricky situation. It's a very tricky situation because at the end of the day, we have to make sure we're protecting our kids. You know what I mean? So. Anyways, I do wanna talk about how I've been following her on Twitter and I've seen some behavior that I wanna talk about, okay? Because um, Life With Mac actually saw my first uh, video and she commented. So I was going to reach out to her, so I started following her on Twitter. Um, but anyways, I'm sitting there, I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, like seeing this little girl put people on blast, especially like support personnel, I am like sweet, Jesus, all right? And here's the thing, again, like I said in the intro, I personally believe that it is her mom who is running that Twitter account. If not, Mama Mac, you need to get your girl in check, all right? Like, I was just telling my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, I'm like, if I ever, if I ever saw my son, Dylan, talking to people like this on Twitter, whether it's people or customer service representatives, oh, hell no, nah, all right? But anyways, on the screen, you'll see a few tweets. Um, when this first started popping off and uh, Life With Mac was having videos like removed and things like that, um, you know, she was going back and forth with people on Twitter and this one young woman who she retweeted ended up like deleting their account, all right? Like we know how YouTubers sometimes weaponize their audience against people and like Life With Mac has a channel with 1.5 million subscribers and she has thousands, tens of thousands of followers on Twitter too. So when she puts somebody on blast, like she puts them on blast. Now, aside from that, what, what inspired me to make this video was this, all right? So this is her most recent tweet. So Life With Mac tweeted, she said, I finally found the pictures of the four items I did the clothing haul with that YouTube deleted for being quote unquote inappropriate. We appealed and it was denied. Please stop shaming and start supporting at YouTube at Susan Wojcicki. I don't know how to say Susan's last name. I hope I did it right, all right? But anyways, that wasn't the issue. So all YouTube did was say, we'd like to look into this for you. Mind sharing the video URL with us. Thanks. That's all they asked. They asked what the URL was, all right? So she retweeted this and said, thanks, but I already appealed and lost my long-term sponsorship with them. Besides, you are completely missing the serious point. Maybe look into the real issues like the discrimination and cyberbullying that you manually reviewed and approved or reach out to me to discuss. Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, this is why we're talking about this. Like, if any of you have ever worked in any kind of like service industry, like, you can let me know down in the comments below. Is there anything worse 
than someone snapping at you for something that you have no control over, especially when you're trying to help. Like, I see this, and this is a problem I have, like, is, like especially, like, if it's a bigger creator, whether it's McKenna or it's her mom, but as you can see from these tweets, I really think it is her mom. But anyways, like, you're setting an example of, this is how you talk to people who are trying to help you. And you retweet them, and you put them on blast, like, no, 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 okay? So I personally, I started out in the car service industry, working at car dealerships, so I was a service advisor. For those of you who don't know what that is, when you buy a brand new car and that POS breaks down, I'm the guy you come in and yell at. So I've had people like come in and scream at me, like I built their damn car, when all I'm trying to do is help. And like, here's the thing, like I get it. I get it, when we're emotional, when we're frustrated, when things aren't going our way, we want someone to blame. We want somebody to freak out at, all right? But typically, this only makes things worse, all right? Like, think about it. Think about it for just one second. Like, when I was working in customer service, like, when people came in just guns blazing and screaming at me or sassing me or giving me attitude, like, do you think anybody wants to help you when you're acting like that, right? Like, think about this, like, have you ever seen somebody like acting ratchet like at a restaurant, like yelling at the waiter or whoever it is? Like, let me tell you this, people who I am not gonna cop an attitude with are people making my food. That is for damn sure, all right? This is why it is so important to keep our emotions in check. And trust me, like, it's easier said than done. It takes work. This is one of the million reasons why I practice mindfulness meditation. Like, I need to get my emotions in control because I used to be that dude. Back when I used to have a ton of anger issues, I used to call up different places and call and cuss and scream and yell and just give them attitude and sass and everything. And then I would wonder why nobody wanted to help me, right? How come nobody worked with me? Like in Life With Max tweet, like, oh, talk to me and we'll work this out. Like, well, maybe don't put them on blast. You know what I mean? Like, it is just insane. And here's the thing, like, they say it's easier to catch flies with honey than it is with vinegar. And I'll tell you this, like, it makes people's day when you treat them like fellow human beings. I cannot tell you. And this is a story I have not shared um, publicly, but I'll share it with you right now. All right, so my son's mom and I, we, uh, we've been separated for a long time. We have an amazing relationship or whatever, but part of separating is that one of the parents has to pay child support. She has him a majority of the time, so I pay child support, all right? Now, when I first got sober, there were some issues, okay, because I wasn't working, and about a month or two ago, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, I woke up and just thousands of dollars were missing from my bank account. Like, literally thousands. My anxiety started going crazy, my anger was going crazy, and I wanted to drive down to the child support office and be like, what the hell happened, all right? Because I knew it was an error on their end. So I went down there and I just sat there calmly. And when I finally got to meet with the case manager, I just talked to her like a human being. I knew there was an error. I knew something must have been wrong because I haven't missed a payment in like pff, seven years or six years, something like that, a long time since I got sober. And and oh my God, like let me tell you this. The, the caseworker who was helping me out was so thankful. She was like, Mr. Boutte, like yeah, we, we made a mistake. I ended up getting like pretty much all the money back. She's like, we made a mistake. I'm really sorry about that. She's like, but I, I gotta tell you, she's like, the fact that you came in here and you didn't like yell at me or scream at me, like most people who come in here and their account is just like been depleted of thousands of dollars, they come in here screaming at me. So thank you, Mr. Boutte. And I'm like, you know what? You got it, you know what I mean? And like I said, it's just because this is something that I've been working on and it's so, so, so important, right? Like. I, I just don't believe in this idea that we like talk down to people who are like trying to help us. Like most people who are in the service industry, they do wanna help us. They do want to resolve our issues. Like I can tell you that from personal experience. One of the things I loved about being in the service industry is that I love helping people. I'm a problem solver. I love helping people solve their problems, but there's nothing that makes me wanna not solve somebody's problem any more than them giving me some attitude, all right? So if you're somebody out there treating customer service people like they're garbage, you need to get it together, okay? Because rule number one of life is don't be a dick.
okay? So again, again, I don't think this is life with Mac. I think this is her mom and YouTube is messing with their money, okay? So I understand the frustration, but I do not like the example that's being put out there that you should be putting people trying to help you on blast, all right? Like that is not a good example to set, okay? But anyways, if you've ever worked in customer service, let me know down in the comments below. Like, do you, did, how did you feel when people would put you on blast or sass you or give you attitude or whatever when you're trying to help them, all right? Is this something that you struggle with? Let me know down in the comments below. But don't forget, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul because I am currently writing Rewire Your Anxiety. So not only will you get all the updates, all my progress, I am also getting you all engaged. I'm giving away free copies of the book. It's gonna be in both ebook format as well as audio book, right? It's gonna be pretty sweet. You'll get my amazing voice along with it. So make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, get access to all of my books for free and some other perks and benefits, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. All right? Thank you so, so much for watching. Be kind to people, and I'll see you next time.